defense sector has created uncertainty for both Saffron of France and Rolls-Royce of the UK regarding the co-development of the engine for the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA. The Gas Turbine Research Establishment, GTRE, under the Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, has yet to select a partner for this critical project. The AMCA program, aimed at creating a fifth-generation stealth fighter jet, is crucial for India's goal of achieving self-reliance in military aviation. The engine is expected to provide significant thrust, surpassing the capability of current Indian fighter engines. Safran has aggressively proposed a complete technology transfer, including intellectual property rights and the potential for local manufacturing, positioning India for self-sufficiency in high-thrust engine production. Their established presence in India, including involvement with the Rafale program, strengthens their bid. In contrast, Rolls-Royce has offered to co-develop the engine's intellectual property while ensuring that India retains IPR. Their experience with engines like the EJ200 and engagement with Indian companies highlight their commitment to strengthening defense ties. Despite these attractive offers, GTRE has not yet made a decision, leaving both companies in suspense. This delay is attributed to India's careful evaluation of both technical and geopolitical factors, as well as the long-term benefits of technology transfer. India's cautious approach could be seen as a strategic move to ensure the best outcome for its defense needs while also encouraging both companies to enhance their offers. This decision will have broader implications for future defense collaborations between India and these European powers. The Indian Navy's MiG-29K fighter jet, a key asset for its naval air arm, is set to make a prominent appearance at Aero India 2025, scheduled from February 10 to 14 at the Yelhunka Air Force Station. This year, the MiG-29K will not only be on static display, but will also highlight significant upgrades, including advancements in its armament and avionics systems. Since its induction in 2010, the MiG-29K has played a critical role in enhancing India's maritime air power, operating from aircraft carriers, such as INS Vikramaditya, and the newly commissioned INS Vikrant. Its versatile capabilities, from air superiority to anti-ship warfare, have made it indispensable to the Indian Navy. At Aero India 2025, the MiG-29K will showcase its upgraded features, reflecting the Navy's focus on modernization and self-reliance. Key upgrades include advanced avionics with a new glass cockpit, improved navigation systems for better situational awareness, and enhanced combat capabilities. The aircraft now also carries a range of indigenous and international weaponry, including the Astra missile series and smart bombs, boosting its multi-role functionality. A notable development is the integration of an indigenous mission computer by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL, replacing the original Russian system, supporting India's defense self-reliance objectives. The upgraded MiG-29KS appearance at Aero India 2025 underscores India's growing capabilities in naval aviation and commitment to indigenous defense technology. These enhancements ensure the MiG-29K remains a potent, versatile asset for the Indian Navy, capable of addressing the evolving demands of modern maritime warfare. Russia is making a renewed effort to revive the multirole transport aircraft, or the MTA project, with India, which had previously stalled due to disagreements over engine specifications. Initially conceived in 2007 as a joint venture between Russia's United Aircraft Corporation and India's Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL, the project aimed to develop a new transport aircraft to replace India's aging Antonov and 32 fleet. India had planned to procure 45 aircraft while Russia intended to acquire around 100. However, the project encountered a setback in 2016, when HAL withdrew due to differences over engine selection and project management. With the Indian Air Force now seeking to procure 60 new transport planes under the MTA program, Russia sees an opportunity to re-enter the competition. This time, Russia has offered to equip the aircraft with engines featuring full authority digital engine control, addressing the major issue that previously stalled the project. However, 
The IF still prefers Western or European commercial engines for the Indian version of the MTA, citing logistical advantages such as easier sourcing of parts and higher aircraft availability. This preference stems from past issues with Russian engines, which lacked full authority digital engine control or FADEC, and led to operational and maintenance challenges. Although Russia is now willing to integrate FADEC systems, the IF's insistence on non-Russian engines presents challenges, including issues related to intellectual property, technology transfer, and engine integration into a Russian airframe design. The engine issue remains a critical obstacle to the MTA project's revival. If India and Russia cannot reach an agreement, India may choose a Western option, potentially affecting the long-standing defense collaboration between the two countries. Larson and Tubro, LNT, in collaboration with the Indian Institute of Technology Delhi, is working on the development of an indigenous 3D scanning sonar system for underwater applications. This partnership is a step towards advancing India's capabilities in underwater exploration and surveillance, aiming for greater self-reliance in marine technology. The project focuses on creating a cutting-edge 3D sonar system that utilizes advanced acoustic technology to produce detailed three-dimensional imaging of underwater environments. It is designed to enhance applications like underwater inspection, mapping and navigation, which are critical for industries such as defense, oil and gas, and marine research. In addition to hardware development, the project includes advancements in signal processing and software algorithms. The sonar system will use innovative waveform designs and compressive sensing techniques to reduce hardware complexity while improving image resolution and quality. This not only lowers costs, but also makes the system adaptable to various mission requirements. This initiative is part of a larger effort by Indian institutions and companies to create homegrown technologies, reducing reliance on foreign imports, and promoting national technological independence. The system is designed for high-resolution underwater mapping and anomaly detection, particularly in murky waters where optical systems may be ineffective. It will also be integrated with autonomous underwater vehicles from LNT for autonomous operation in challenging underwater environments. The development process includes rigorous testing, starting in controlled settings at IIT Delhi's underwater tank, and progressing to real-world trials at LNT's offshore facility near Chennai. This phased approach ensures that the sonar system will perform effectively under various underwater conditions. The outgoing U.S. ambassador to India, Eric Garcetti, stated that the U.S. has engaged with Indian leaders from across the political spectrum to encourage a review of India's strict nuclear liability laws. These regulations, among the world's strictest, hold not only plant operators, but also reactor manufacturers responsible in the event of an accident. This has hindered several nuclear projects in India, including a collaboration with France to build the world's largest nuclear power plant in Maharashtra. Garcetti's comments followed statements by U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, who mentioned that the U.S. is close to removing long-standing barriers to civil nuclear cooperation with India. Sullivan indicated that formal procedures to eliminate regulations preventing collaboration between Indian and U.S. companies in nuclear energy projects would be completed soon. Garcetti also noted that the Trump administration is focused on advancing the India-U.S. civil nuclear deal, which has been in the works for nearly two decades. Discussions between Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President Joe Biden last year aimed at reviving nuclear trade. Garcetti highlighted the potential of U.S.-made small nuclear reactors, which could be used in areas where traditional power plants cannot operate. He suggested that India's skilled workforce combined with American technology could create significant opportunities if the liability laws are relaxed. India Seeking to expand its nuclear power capacity to address both its rising energy demands and environmental goals, currently operates 22 nuclear reactors through the state-owned Nuclear Power Corporation of India. India's Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson, Rundar Jeswal, welcomed the lifting of sanctions on Indian atomic research institutions, hoping it would lead to further collaboration and progress on issues like the Nuclear Liability Clause.
That's all from YKS team for now. If you like the information, then please do share and give a like. You can also become our channel member and support our work. Thanks for watching.